Welcome to worship, everyone, as we gather together on this, the Lord's Day. Uh, I love Sundays, don't you? Amen. I just, I, there's just something about being together with God's people and hearing, just hearing what God has to say to us in and through his word, through the music that lifts us up. It's so good, so good to be in church. Uh, I'm Pastor Sam Polito, and I'm uh, grateful uh, to be here today. Thank you to those who are joining us online this morning. Uh, God bless you and keep you. Join us. Join us this morning. Amen. have a number of announcements in uh, the life of the church, things that uh, we can cover. Uh, our Losing Weight God's Way group meets at 11 a.m. on Wednesdays here at the church. Uh, please uh, stop in uh, for, for this uh, Bible study ministry, uh, Weight Loss God's Way. And uh, just a reminder, men's breakfast is this Saturday. It's, uh, that's August 13th at 8 a.m. So uh, come join us, hang out with us. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about the Lord, and we'll just have uh, some fellowship around the table. Um, have an announcement. Uh, well, first of all, I'll say, are there any other announcements? I know Marcia will be com come up. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Uh, looking forward to packing the backpacks after church. Uh, if you can stay, uh, it goes pretty quickly. You just go around the tables, pick up the items, and, uh, and they're all set. So consider staying after church to do that. Let's bow our heads in a word of prayer. Let's seek God. Lord, we're just grateful for each and every day you give us. For the life we live, it is given from you to us. And help us live that life according to your example. Help us to live a life pleasing to you. And help us live a life that is helpful to others in very real ways that we let your light shine in and through us. Be with us, we pray, as your great presence is experienced in today's worship service. We give you all thanks and praise. And to that we say an amen. Say amen. amen. <sighs> Buenos dias. Please join me in the call to worship. The light of Christ shines in us and through us. Thy word I have hid in my heart. Jesus, sin, fill me with thy Holy Spirit. In Christ, we have victory. Amen. If you're able, please stand. We're going to chill out with hymn 370. Victory in Jesus.
And you may be seated. This is our time of joys and concerns and just our time to share together uh, what the Lord has done during the week, how he's been with us and uh, supported us, how we've been there for each other and how we can be there for each other. I see Nancy, yes. Prayers for Cindy, who is in the hospital. Um, just want to man mention, my dad has been in the hospital, uh, Laporte Hospital, right here for one week now. And uh, we're, we're watching over and caring for him. He will be heading home with hospice from there probably Monday. So do keep my dad, Tom Polito, in prayer. And of course, our, our family uh, during this time of, uh, well, transition, we'll call it, time of transition. Other requests? Right here. Hi, Mary. Linda Barnes. She's, um, I believe she's in the Fort Hospital for the third time since uh, maybe July. Um, and I don't really know what the problem is, but I know that there's a possible surgery coming up. And prayers for her and the family to support. Linda Barnes. And uh, in the hospital, uh, surgery, a prayer for healing. Yes, yes. Also, but also, I'm sorry. Yes. Also, um, the wife of Bud's cousin who has cancer already. She fell, broke her arm in a couple places, and also, also fractured her pelvis. She's in Wisconsin. For Bud's cousin's wife, that Vivian, Vivian, Vivian that Boyce. helps. Yeah, Vivian Boyce, healing. Who has fallen and healing for her. Uh, did I see you with your hand up, Bev? Yes, I have a joke. Susie Riberty is here worshiping with us today, and her mother is Lester Riberty, um, a longtime member of our church, and Susie is very special. <laughs> great joy, great joy. Now I see you, George. Yes. I just want to thank everybody for their prayers and their cards. It's so nice. And I am in the I'm sure those prayers are working. Yeah. Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving for all the prayers and uh, doing better than uh, he was. Uh, thank, Thanksgiving from George to God and of course to all, all of you for your prayers. Very, very nice. Uh, came over and helped at the house too. Very nice. Very nice. Okay. Just see. You okay, Mike? It's all good? Yeah. It's just too much you, you just give that to the Lord and you head into the day. Right? <laughs> all right. Let's, let's go ahead and go to the Lord in silent prayer. Don't let your heart beat. Oh, I missed my wife, Cindy. No. Oh, thank you. Uh, talk to Beverly Hill this morning. Prayers for Tom. Uh, on the prayer chain, he's been having uh, pain in his chest. And then um, Beverly is just the prayingest person that we have going. And her prayer was for Dr. Ali, A-L-I, uh, 
that, that uh, he will be the help that God uses to help Tom. Isn't that a beautiful prayer to pray for the doctor as well? Uh, but prayers for Tom and Beverly too. She's, she's uh, going through some things as well, uh, doctor-wise. So keep Beverly and Tom. They would be here, but they just right now, just right now, they need our prayers. Thank you, Cindy. Yes, Carolyn. I know they're on our prayer list, but uh, Jan and Jim Palmer both are still going through a lot. So I just wonder if you want to give them a keep them in your prayers. Thank you. 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 Uh, so much for your prayers for Jen and Jim as well. Thank you, Carolyn. All right, silent prayer. This is you. This is God. Whatever needs to happen. Joy, praise, thanksgiving, confession, repentance. Um, just a prayer to get closer to God. What, what you know. You know your heart. And here's the thing. So does God. So let's pray. Lord, of the many prayers that rise to you, these are our prayers from our faith community. And the thing I know, I know this, you hear each and every prayer from everyone who is praying, even this moment, you hear. Prayers are with Cindy Knife as she's in the hospital, for Linda Barnes, hospitalized, facing surgery, prayer for healing. For uh, Vivian, who has fallen, uh, bring healing to her. Uh, grateful for friends that are able to visit and be with us. Susie, God bless her in the way she is and in her uh, travels. God bless her. Uh, from George, you, you know his grateful heart. His praise has never ceased to rise to you. And once again, here to encourage us, uh, he's, he's lifted those uh, thanksgivings to you. And also to those who have helped George at his home uh, and for uh, all the cards, everything. Great gratitude. Uh, prayers for Tom Hill from Beverly Hill and from all of us, Lord. Hear our prayers. And then uh, Jan and also Jim Balmer in this time, in this season of their life. Uh, men, Jan together well and watch over Jim. We ask all of these because we know who you are. But more than that, you know who we are, your people, out of your great love. You have taught us to pray through your scripture as now we pray together the Lord's Prayer using trespasses. We pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. It is time for our young children to come forward at this time. It is time for us to gather up here. Oh, I see you coming. There you go. Yeah, we'll hang out for a little bit if that's okay. How's summer going? Good. All good? Yeah. Wait a minute. School's going to be starting soon, isn't it? Yeah. There's something I like to do, and that is pray 
for the students that are going back to school that they have a good year and pray for the teachers and those that help and those in the library and everybody. They've had a good summer. I, I pray they've had a good summer, but we're going to pray for them too. So would you help me pray for them? Let's hold our hands. Let's pray. Thank you, God, for these students right here and for all the students. Lord, watch over them, keep them safe, and let them just have an awesome year that they see new things and learn new things and that they do well in school. Give them a good day in school as, as they head back. And then for all the teachers, the, the, the nurse, the principal, the, uh, just all those that will be watching over the kids at school, give them a, a, a warm heart and a caring heart as they watch over our very precious children. We pray because you are God, and we pray because we trust you. And to that we say amen. Say amen. amen. Say amen. Now, uh, let's pray our prayer before we're out of here. What's our prayer? Like this? Come into my heart, Lord Jesus. Come into my heart today. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus. Come into my heart today. Let me hear you say amen. <laughs> Let me hear everyone say amen. amen. And now you're out of here. Just so precious. Hear this morning's invitation to share. Giving comes out of a place of gratitude. So nurture a grateful spirit within yourself. There's an old hymn, Count Your Many Blessings. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your many blessings, see what God has done. That's what we're doing in the offering, is we're counting our many blessings and acknowledging where they come from. Where does our help come from? It comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. And that's who we're acknowledging as we collect this offering together as God's people. Let's have the offering come forward as we stand together. Let's stand and sing together the doxology. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above the heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. From our grateful hearts, we give these gifts. And through us, distribute these gifts into the world as we say your name and live a life according to your example. Let this gift bring others to the place of salvation through your son, Jesus Christ. We pray this in his name. So that everybody says an amen. Say amen. 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 You may be seated. As the world looks upon me as I struggle alone, they say I have nothing, but they are so wrong. In my heart I'm rejoicing, oh, I wish they could see.
roof up above me, I've a good place to sleep. There's food on my table and shoes on my feet. You gave me your love, Lord, and a fine family. Thank you, Lord, for your blessings on me. Please listen for the word of God. We're coming out of Luke chapter 12, verses 32 to 40 today. Do not be afraid, little flock, for your father has been pleased to give you the kingdom. Sell your possessions and give to the poor. Provide purses for yourselves that will not wear out a treasure in heaven that will never fail, where no thief comes near nor moth destroys. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Be dressed ready for service and keep your lamps burning, like servants waiting for their master to return from the wedding banquet, so that when he comes and knocks, they can immediately open the door for him. It will be good for those servants whose master finds them watching when he comes. Truly, I tell you, he will dress himself to serve, will have them recline at the table, and will come and wait on them. It will be good for those servants whose master finds them ready even if he comes in the middle of the night or toward daybreak. But understand this. If the owner of the house had known at what time the hour of the thief was coming, he would not have let his house get broken into. You also must be ready, because the Son of Man will come at an hour when you do not expect him. The word of God for the people of God. To God. This, this happens to me every now and, then, uh, now and then. I study a text for a Sunday sermon, and, and every now and again I ask myself, when? When did Jesus say these things? I also ask another question quite often, and that is why. It's so important to look deeper into Scripture and understand why he was sharing this particular parable in that moment. I found today's text needed a little context for us. We are in the Gospel of Luke that we know, chapter 12, and Jesus is teaching. He's healing. He, he's preaching. He is gathering followers along the way, and the problem is some of the crowd that gathered were half-hearted half-hearted. They had divided loyalties. It is a trap we all can easily fall into. The idea that Jesus is part of our lives instead of our whole life, the reason we live. They are curious these people in our text today they're curious but are they committed jesus is teaching one of his favorite topics he is talking about the kingdom of god many if not most of his parables begin by saying the kingdom of god is like this or jesus would teach about the yeast or or the mustard seed or the pearl of great price Let's talk about the kingdom of God for a moment. The kingdom of God has a dual time frame. It is both right now and one glorious day. L let me explain that. 
It is the Father's good pleasure, verse 32 that we just heard, it is the Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. To me, that speaks of right now. For those listening in that day, that's the who. Also to me, that speaks of right now for us today, not just them back then, but for us here today. And stick with me here. Follow, follow along with this. Jesus then says, sell your possessions, gives al give alms. Give alms. These words, I believe, apply right away to those who were listening in that day. They were to sell possessions right then. But here's the thing. Right now, for us today, we too must sell possessions as well. Well, I, these words kind of hit real close to home, don't they? If we apply God's words to our life right now, to let go of those things that hold on to us and give alms to those who have need around us. I saw and I heard a little bit about that when the youth came back last Sunday and talked about their mission trip. Well, let's, let's go this direction. Why do they call them possessions? Possessions. The best answer I have is because often they possess us. We have stuff. Too much stuff, too much stuff. Things piling up around us. It was the same back then. Accumulate, accumulate. You no longer own your things. They actually begin to own you. You become possessed by your possessions. Jesus proposes a radical thought. Just let it go. Let go of stuff. Then do what? Embrace what? Jesus says embrace others and helping others. The word used is alms, A-L-M-S, alms. Help others, sell your possessions, give alms to the poor. Let me explain something. Jesus was trying to build character in those who were following. He was trying to foster commitment, a commitment level of the would-be followers, those who were curious but not committed. I remember the words Jesus spoke to the rich young ruler in Scripture. He told him, you lacked one thing. One thing. Go sell your possessions, give to the poor, and come, follow me. What, why, why? Why so specific? Why sell possessions? What we need to realize is that to follow Jesus meant leaving the old ways behind. It meant traveling with Jesus wherever he went, especially in that day to the crowd he was speaking to right then. It meant sleeping under the stars. I, I know that sounds glorious and amazing in some ways, but that's a rough life. What was it Jesus said? Birds have their nests, foxes their dens, but the Son of Man has no place to lay his head. The 12 disciples, they left their boats. They left their nets. They left their jobs. They left their families. Total commitment. And nothing less would do. Just... 
just what are we to do with this text today? I believe that a good takeaway from this text is this. Downsize. Downsize. Yes, stuff. Sell stuff. Give stuff. Give, give to those in need. That practice, that principle that applied to them then, it preaches to us today as well. So, so maybe this week, seek out a way to live out these Bible verses. Help a family. Help a kid. Help a friend. Help cause help causes like let, let's say Salvation Army, the food pantry there. I walked through it recently, and those that were operating it said they've never seen the donations so low so little on hand and so many to help. So think about maybe Salvation Army right here. Think about the donations you've made to Rock the Block. Thank you for those, for our mission trip. Uh, for the youth, thank you for giving to that. See, what it means is you give up something and then give something. Give alms. Like Jesus said. A scripture lesson goes on. It says, lay up for yourself treasures in heaven. No rust, no moth, no waste, no robbers, no thieves. Here is the memory verse to take away from our lesson. The nugget of truth. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. What are you focused on? With the blessings that come into your life, the resources you earn from the sweat of your brow, what possesses you? What is the focus of your life, your day, your, your resources? Jesus says, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Oh, you got to live right. Don't mess around with the ways of the world. Uh, there's a choice before you each and every day. The small foxes. The small foxes spoil the vine. If you let in a little sin, it'll do you in. <laughs> that was something my mentor said to me once. I never forgot it. Guard your heart. Guard your life. Watch what you treasure. Seek first the kingdom of God, his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. All this stuff will be added to you. You'll have more than you ever imagined. And you'll be more grateful than ever before. All that this means is the kingdom of God. In the kingdom of God, every need will be taken care of. God will take care of all your needs according to his riches and glory. So Jesus said, sell your stuff, give alms. He finishes with one last comment. The whole purpose of him telling this story, this parable, this passage is this. He sums it up by saying, be ready. He puts it in parable form. Be dressed ready for action. Keep your lamp lit. Jesus used a popular wedding banquet motif in Scripture. 
In Jesus' day, a wedding celebration would begin at the groom's house. From there, they would travel to the bride's house. And the bridegroom would carry with him many gifts. And a celebration would last for several days. Nobody knew how long. Then they would all get up and travel back to the groom's house for more celebration. And the servants at the groom's house, upon his return from the bride's house, didn't know the exact hour he would return. Be ready. This set the stage for the teaching of the second coming of the Messiah, Jesus, that we still live under today. Be ready. Jesus, speaking of his return in parable form. Keep your lamps lit. Be ready. He will come like a thief in the night. <clears throat> in other words, unexpectedly. He will return like the bridegroom from the bride's house. Verse 40 is our final verse for today. Listen to it once again. You must be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an unexpected hour. Jesus will show up. He shows up right now in our lives and calls us to follow him. Not just be curious, but be committed. Leave behind, sell stuff. Sell those things that possess you. Then also, one day, he will return like the bridegroom. Be ready. Remember the phrase when I was a kid, we'd have little races or relay races, and the phrase at the beginning of them was always, ready, set, go. We need to be ready with our lamps lit. We need to be set, servants of the master, willing to serve. And then we need to go. Let your light so shine that others may see, see that you serve the one, the only one, who can set us free. His name is Jesus. He sets us free. Be ready. And to that, all God's children, say an amen. Say amen. Amen, amen and amen. Let's prepare ourselves for Holy Communion. Follow along as the words uh, appear on the screen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, almighty God, creator of heaven and earth, God of all that came before us, and God of us today. And so with all your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. We sing, holy, holy, holy Lord. God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to us, your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and spirit. So on the night which he gave himself up for us, he took the bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, and gave it to the disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. 
And when the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, God, gave it to his disciples, said, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood, new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim now together the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. And our prayer. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and the cup. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world, the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with your Holy Spirit and your Holy Church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty God, now and forever. Those who will be helping, come forward. I remind you that you need not be a member of this church or the United Methodist Church, but all those desiring to live a life according to the example of Christ are welcome here. It is the Lord's table. It is to the Lord Jesus Christ that you respond when you come. Take the bread into your open hand. I will place it there. Take the cup. And your response as you receive these is, thanks be to God, the body of Christ and the blood of Christ, and your response is, thanks be to God. We'll come by the center aisle. Come, taste and see that the Lord is good. Gentlemen.
And we have our closing hymn for you now. Hymn 133, it's leaning on the everlasting arms. Let's stand together and sing. In my sermon, I said, be ready. Now, what does that mean? Draw close to God. As close as close can be, be in prayer, be in his word, be with God's people. On a regular basis, surround yourself with the love and presence of God. And then go out into the world and be the loving presence of Christ in the world. For those who call upon the name will be saved. And how can they call upon the name of the Lord if they don't hear? And how can they hear if someone doesn't tell them? So go and tell them that they too might be ready. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Say amen. Amen. amen.